bet in play throughout the Betfred World Snooker Championship. Betfred, proud sponsors of the World Snooker Championship. A great, great feeling. I mean, as I said in, in my previous interview, to, to win it once was a, a huge achievement and, and something obviously I wanted to do, but never dreamed of winning it twice and uh, yeah, quite emotional and speechless at the moment. How does the immediate aftermath in terms of emotions compare to when you won it for the first time? Well, I mean, the first time's obviously always special, I think, especially the the World Championships, the same as when you win your first ranking tournament, it always seems to have a, a good place in your heart. But like you say, when you look at the people who's won it twice, there's probably not that many players and, and to join that elite group is uh, something very special. You look shattered. I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yesterday it was more shattered. I felt more shattered yesterday. So to come out of that 10-7 uh, was, was great, really, because I know that in, the, in my previous two finals before, I've gone into the first day feeling exactly the same and I've not performed and, and sort of, especially against John in the first final, I sort of lost it in the first day. So to manage to be 10-7 in front after that first day was massive. At 6-0 up, what were you thinking? Well, I was thinking, great, this is easy. But I mean, no, Ding was under a lot of pressure and I think you could tell that at the start. And I sort of knew that going into the final because one, it was his, it was his first world final and two, you think of the, the amount of pressure what's on him from China, expectation to, to become world champion. So I knew I had to capitalise early doors and, and I seemed to do that and, and seemed to do it well. Every time I got a chance, I seemed to punish him and score. Uh, and then I was fractioned from going 7-0 as well. And I think... If I went 7-0, I think I probably could have had a lot more confidence and, and may have won the match a little bit easier. But, I mean, Ding showed his class and showed what a great player he was and to come back into it and, and get within one frame at times. And I managed to dig deep and, and sort of get myself out of the hole. Huge pressure on Ding, as you just pointed out. Did you feel pressure? Because as world number one, you were actually underdog with the bookmakers, some of them. Yeah, well, I mean, I think, I suppose, on present form throughout this tournament, I understand why, because... Like I say, apart from the last session against Marco, where I, where I sort of played something near to, to what I'm capable of, other than that, this tournament, it's been sort of average or, or lower than average, really. And you look at Ding overall throughout the tournament, he's played great. And the probably only bad session he had was probably the, the first session in the final, really. Other than that, he seemed to score every single time he got a chance. So uh, that's why I was second favourite. But here I am sitting as champion. So how on earth do you win a world title, in your words, playing below average. How, how do you manage to do it? I think it's just grit and determination really. I mean I just never never seem to give in no matter how bad I'm playing and until that final ball's potted I still keep believing inside that I can win. I mean obviously it's difficult there's a lot of players out there if they're not really performing like they, they would do they sort of let their heads go and sort of not give in as such but just sort of get a little bit downbeat and uh, if anything it seems to, to inspire me and G me on a little bit more. You moved 17-14 ahead, so just one away from victory within seconds of your beloved Leicester City <laughs> clinching the Premier League title. Did you know? Did anyone mention it? I, I didn't know, no, not until after. One of the guys who had just sat to the left of, of where I, I was sitting, a, a guy called Brian Wright from Coventry, one of our friends, is, is a big Leicester fan as well. So a, after I got back to my seat, after I'd won, he said to me it was to all the game and Leicester are champions. And that was the only time I knew. And... I sort of knew going out there that the game was kicking off, but I tried to just not think about it too much. I didn't want it to distract, obviously, what I had to do in hand. Can you believe it? Two years ago, Leicester were promoted when you won the world title. Two years on, this has happened. No, no, I can't believe it. I mean, I don't know if it, which is more of a shock, me winning it twice <laughs> or Leicester becoming Premier League champions. But uh, no, as you say, it must be a good omen. I mean, hopefully in another two years, uh, they win the Premier League again and hopefully I can come back and win it again. Best day of your life, best night of your life? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't. I mean, you don't come world champion every every day of your life. So, I mean, as I said before, to win it once was great. To win it two times is a dream come true. Are you going to be singing again tonight? You gave a snow patrol a couple of years ago. No, I won't be singing tonight. I'll just be uh, just be having a drink with my friends and family and just uh, just relaxing and unwinding. Like I say, I'm, I'm really tired at the moment, but I'm sure I'll last a night with all you boys. <laughs> Sounds like a challenge. That's good for me. <laughs> I think it did as far as mentally and physically going out there uh, I, I think that definitely worked as an advantage but as far as uh, yeah, performance wise and, and, and match play wise I sort of think it worked as a disadvantage because I definitely didn't feel match sharp coming into the tournament 
obviously I practiced for the tournament back home, but I was only playing on my own, wasn't really arranging games with other players on the tour to try and see where my game was at really. So I was sort of coming in blind, so I, d I didn't really know how I was going to play. I felt as though I was playing okay at home, but then obviously got caught out in patches and certain sessions and just managed to, like I say, just dig my way out really in, in a lot of the matches. Not really, no, because I think obviously some of the frames, like when I've made breaks in one visit, I've made them, I've looked at the time, I mean, it, it sort of did play on my mind a little bit, because every time if I won a frame in one visit, I'd sort of look at the scoreboard to see how, how long it was, and it was about 10 or 11 minutes, so I thought, well, I'm obviously not that late, it's just when the frames go scrappy, obviously, uh, if, if I break down on a break and then play safe, and obviously my safety seemed to be really good in the final and uh, put Ding under, under pressure.